In my last video on the Polygon network, I introduced this widely used Ethereum layer two scaling solution, which is popular for GameFi, NFTs, and DeFi. Today, let's do a deeper dive into its network structure. I'm Corey, and on this channel, I help you decode technology and innovation to grow your wealth on the journey to financial independence. So in this video, let's pick up where we left off and take a closer look at Polygon's modular consensus mechanism and the native commit chain consensus mechanism. Like always, I have time codes below in case you want to skip ahead. As we covered in the first video on Polygon, it's a layer two scaling solution created to help bring mass adoption to the Ethereum platform. To take things a step further, the Polygon network is a blockchain application platform that provides hybrid proof of stake and plasma enabled sidechains. The goal and purpose of Polygon's design approach is to allow Polygon to support a growing list of scaling solutions for Ethereum over time without taking a position that one approach versus another will be the sole winner in the future. This is why they support or are planning to support each of the various scaling strategies I highlighted in my prior video. Let's look at how Polygon achieves its scaling goals due to the underlying technical architecture of its proof of stake consensus mechanism called commit chain. The commit chain proof of stake architecture is the core of Polygon's consensus mechanism. For context, when I'm talking about the commit chain, what I'm referring to is everything that is happening under the hood of the blue square that you can see on the screen. And there could be some combination of Polygon's proof of stake chain, the commit chain, the shared security chain, an enterprise chain, an optimistic rollup, a ZK rollup, or a standalone side chain that is integrating with the Polygon network. Now that we have the context out of the way, the commit chain is made up of three layers. The Ethereum layer first. It's a set of contracts on the Ethereum network. Note that this layer could in theory be another blockchain base layer like Solana or Polkadot's relay chain. Next, we have the Hemdall layer, a set of proof of stake Hemdall nodes, for example, downloaded software and computers, which are these nodes running in parallel to Ethereum and monitoring the set of contracts on the Ethereum network. To round things out, we've got the Bohr layer. The Bohr layer represents a set of block producing Bohr nodes shuttled by Hemdall nodes. Okay, so let's take a deeper look. The Ethereum layer. So Polygon maintains a set of smart contracts on Ethereum, which handle staking contracts for management for the proof of stake layer, checkpoint contracts of the sidechain state, reward contracts, including validator shares. When we look at the Hemdall layer, which is the validator layer, let's level set here. Recall that a blockchain validator is someone who is responsible for verifying transactions within a blockchain. For more on that topic, you can check out my Polkadot and Kusama network videos for a deep dive into the concept of validators. For the Polygon network, any participant can be qualified to become a Polygon validator by running a full node to earn rewards and collect transaction fees. To ensure the good participation by validators, you must lock up some of your Matic tokens as a stake in the ecosystem and you can be slashed, which means losing tokens if you do not fulfill your role as a validator, for example, by having too much downtime on the network. Hemdall is the proof of stake validator node that works with the staking contracts on Ethereum to enable the proof of stake mechanism on Polygon. Polygon has implemented their proof of stake mechanism by building on top of Tendermint's consensus engine to create their own customized version, which they call Peppermint. Make sure to check out my videos on the Cosmos network if you want to learn more about the Tendermint consensus engine, and I've got those links in the show notes below. Hemdall is responsible for block validation, block producer committee selection, and checkpointing a representation of the sidechain blocks to Ethereum, among other things. So to round things out, we've got the Bohr block producer layer. Bohr is the Polygon block producer layer, the entity responsible for aggregating transactions into blocks. Block producers are periodically shuffled by committee election on the Hemdall proof of stake layer in durations. This process effectively works like in the business world where you have a rotation of board members. As you can see, the Polygon team has taken and continues to take a very modular and thoughtful approach to building out a consensus mechanism that can support a plethora of design approaches from other blockchains that are looking to scale. Based on the adoption we have seen thus far, the marketplace seems to agree with and like the flexibility that Polygon offers from the adoption we've seen for NFTs with Prada and Adidas, DeFi, as well as gaming projects. Let me know what you think about the Polygon Network's flexible structure in the comments below. And don't forget to sign up for my free weekly newsletter link in the show notes, where I go more in depth on digital assets and topics impacting the industry globally. Join me on the path to decoding technology and innovation to grow your wealth on the journey to financial independence. Don't forget to like, 
share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Until next time.